Samsung sent me an invite to come see them in San Francisco, along with all the other members of the press. And so I did what any tech reporter does when Samsung has something to show us. I got on a plane. And it turns out it was worth the trip. These are the new Samsung S10 models. There are four in total. The S10 and S10 Plus, which are essentially the same, save for the screen sizes and a couple of other changes. The S10e, their new budget model, and the S10 5G, their 5G enabled even larger version. So first, let's start with the three main devices, we'll call them, the S10, the S10 Plus, and the S10e. Just so you guys know, I didn't have a lot of time with these devices, but I should be getting a device. So expect a complete walkthrough later. This, we're just gonna kind of dive into what all the specs are for all of the devices, when they're being released, the prices, etc. They're made out of a glass on the front and back like we're used to seeing with Samsung now, but unlike Samsung, usually they come in a bunch of colors. We have prism white, blue, black, and flamingo pink coming to the US with another prism green color available in some other markets. For the screen, the S10 has a 6.1 inch screen while the S10 Plus has a 6.4 inch screen. Both with the same QHD Plus resolution, curved glass AMOLED display with a 19 by nine aspect ratio as well. The S10e on the other hand has a 5.8 inch full HD Plus non-curved screen. That screen and all the devices is apparently now the world's first HDR10 Plus certified screen on a mobile device, and Samsung says it's their first dynamic AMOLED screen as well. Apparently, it can reduce blue light coming from it, the type of light that has been shown to affect your sleep patterns, eye strain, etc., without actually changing the color of the display at all. You can, of course, turn on the blue light filter that does adjust the color to bring the amount of blue light down further, but you'll be getting 42% less blue light automatically just because of the new displays. Now, what you will notice immediately about all three devices though is that these new displays go even further to the edge of the device and the front camera is now in a cutout in the display. That front camera on all three of these devices is the same 10 megapixel dual pixel autofocus f1.9 aperture, but the S10 Plus includes a secondary 8 megapixel RGB depth camera with an aperture of f2.2. In the display of the S10 and S10 Plus, we now have an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that uses sonar basically to 3D map the ridges in your fingerprint so that it's harder to spoof. The S10e, on the other hand, has the fingerprint sensor built into the power button on the side of the device. All the devices will be powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset here in the US and an Exynos chipset of some sort in other markets. In all have CAT20, two gigabit per second LTE, IP68 ratings, Dolby Atmos on stereo AKG speakers, and a micro SD card slot. Also, for connectivity, the phone supports Wi-Fi 6, also known as 802.11ax, which is 20% faster than 802.11ac and just better optimized. So if you have a router capable of that at home, you'll be able to use that better and newer Wi-Fi standard. Oh, and yes, they also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. For storage and RAM, the S10e comes in either a six gig of RAM, 128 gig of storage model, or an eight gig, 256 gig model. The S10 comes with eight gigs of RAM in either 128 or 512 gig storage models. And the S10 Plus comes with either eight gigs of RAM and 128 or 512 as well, or a top model with a ridiculous 12 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. Samsung said they wanted to help differentiate the top storage models of the S10 and S10 Plus. So the 512 gig and the one terabyte models come in ceramic white or ceramic black. They have a cool matte finish to them in comparison to the other models and are also made out of ceramic so they are much more scratch resistant as well. For batteries and power, all the devices now support Samsung's fast wireless charging 2.0 that will apparently wirelessly charge the device even faster than the original fast charging tech that we've seen already. For capacity, the S10e is 3100 milliamps, the S10 is 3400 milliamps, and the S10 Plus is 4100 milliamps. Samsung also took a note from Huawei's book, it seems, and added wireless power sharing or reverse Qi charging. You can turn this on in settings and now put another Qi device on the back to have the phone transfer some of its power to the other device. Hopefully it's faster than Huawei's was, but I'll test that out in that complete walkthrough coming soon. Moving on to the rear cameras, Two of the cameras on the back of the phones are all the same across all three devices. We have a 12 megapixel dual aperture of f1.5 and f2.4, dual pixel autofocus, 77 degree field of view camera that is optically stabilized, thankfully, and an ultra wide 16 megapixel fixed focus f2.2, 123 degree field of view camera as well. Now the S10 and the S10 Plus though, add a third camera, which is a telephoto 12 megapixel f2.4 optically stabilized 45 degree field of view camera. 
They are all capable of shooting in HDR10+, Plus and have 4K resolution video on the front and the rear cameras. And lastly, Samsung briefly showed us their 5G model. But the only info that was shared about it though, other than it'll obviously support 5G networks, is that it'll have a 6.7 inch display, a 3D depth camera on the front and back, presumably for AR capabilities and maybe facial recognition, and a 4500 milliamp battery, and basically similar specs for camera, etc., to the S10+. Plus. Now the main three will be available for pre-order starting February 21st and will go on sale March 8th. As for the 5G model, we're being told it'll launch sometime in quarter two on Verizon at first and then on the other carriers after that. For pricing, the S10e will start at $749.99, the S10 will start at $899.99, and the S10 Plus will start at $999.99. The 5G model, there's no pricing yet. Now I should be getting a device ASAP. And when I do, I will do a complete walkthrough on it. I'm gonna do a real world battery test on it, some camera comparisons, a whole bunch of other stuff. So stay tuned for that. And if you're not already, you should be subscribed to the channel. I'm just saying. And ding the bell next to where subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos and when those videos come out. Otherwise, also check out the link below to my newly relaunched blog where I now am doing tips and tricks and other things that don't necessarily make it here to video. And there's a weekly newsletter that you can subscribe to there. Uh, that just goes out every Sunday. It's not annoying, I promise. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.